Hello, my name is Connie Moore, and I am not Hilda Homemaker. I have worked most of my entire life, and so I have not had a lot of time to do all these homemaking things. But I've learned how to make good whole wheat bread, and it's kind of complicated. There's a lot of steps, but it's so good, and it's so good for you. So I want to help you figure this out. Um, first of all, the flour, I took the whole wheat and I ground it in my grinder. So that makes it more healthy as well. So here's the finished product, yay! So when you make whole wheat bread, there are four different things you've got to think about. There are the, there's the yeast mixture that has to sit for a bit in warm water so the yeast starts working. It's your leaven. There's the egg mixture. And there is the liquid mixture that you put on the stove to get warm. And then there's the flour mixture. So you put them all together in a big bowl at the end. So there's four different things going on at the same time. So when you begin, you have to get the yeast going, first of all, because we want it to sit there for a bit. One half cup hot water. Two tablespoons yeast. And this is a recipe that uses honey, which is better for you. Some recipes use sugar. I like the honey. So then it sits there for a while and the yeast starts to do its thing because it's in hot, warm water. Some bread mixtures will use milk or sugar in the, in the process. But with wheat, you use water with everything. You know that the yeast has worked because look at this. It's starting to bubble up and do its yeast leavening thing. Then you also have the egg mixture. This recipe calls for two beaten eggs. Yay! So for the liquid ingredients that you put in a saucepan, you need um, some buttermilk. But who has buttermilk? No one. So in order to make buttermilk, voila, all you need is lemon juice. You have one cup milk, and then you add one tablespoon lemon juice, and now you've got buttermilk. Yay! So we put the, the buttermilk in, four cups warm water, Two teaspoons salt, two thirds cup oil, and two thirds cup honey. Some recipes call for shortening or sugar, but this one is more healthy. So yay! Then we put this on the stove and you let it get warm. Just warm, not boiling, just warm. Because if it's too warm, it kills the yeast. But if it's too cold, it doesn't work with the yeast. My mom used to always have this sitting on her stove when we were growing up. And I was like, oh, we've got rolls coming, yay! And she would make cinnamon rolls and they were so good. Had no idea how she had cinnamon rolls ready by 7 a.m., but somehow she did. So now is the miracle time. We're gonna make the dough. So you put all of these things together. So you put your liquid, oil, sugar, salt mixture in. You put your yeast mixture in. Hey, Mr. Yeast, do your job. Make everything rise. Put your eggs in. Then we put the flour in one cup at a time. So this recipe calls for one cup white flour and seven cups whole wheat flour. So I start my mixer and I go.
can adjust the amount of flour until it's a sticky um, mixture. This needs more flour in it. Um, the, the elevation and also the barometric pressure actually determines how the dough turns out. It's interesting. <laughs> I will show you when it's the right consistency. Flour from the sides. I had to put some extra white flour in today for some reason to make it the right consistency. Yeah, 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 this is the right consistency now. See how it's kind of um, rubbery a bit, or I don't know the right adjective, but. My mom would always say that she wanted her roll doll to be sticky. And then you put a damp cloth over it and you let it rise. It should double in size. And you put it in a warm place in your house. Some ovens actually have a really low setting. You could put it in your oven and it would rise. So it takes a little while to rise depending on how, how hot your house is. And also elevation makes a difference. The reason the cloth is damp, if you do not dampen the cloth, there, be, um, there gets a, a crust on the dough. And it's kind of, yuck. let's see, let's see. Voila! Woo! It rolls about twice as much. Yay! Now, that took a while. <laughs> now you put Pam on the, on the loaf pans. We have metal ones here and also um, glass ones. Now you do the magic with your fingers. My mom used to put butter on her fingers so they wouldn't stick. I'm just putting pan on. <laughs> okay, grab the dough. Woo! <laughs> oh, it is sticky. <laughs> you want it sticky because then the bread is light and fluffy. Okay, then you roll like this. My mom used to spank it. <laughs> I'm not very good at the spanking action. Then you put it in the loaf pan and try and make it flat on the top. Okay, another bunch. Make it into a loaf. This is a, oh man, it's sticky. That's the right consistency. And you can actually turn this bread um, dough into rolls as well. But we're making this into bread. So about that much, I don't know, half to three quarters of the amount. This is gonna make four loaves here. Feels good to have good dough in your hands. <laughs> Maybe that's why they call money, you know, money. Another name for money is dough. Well, you got the dough now. You try and keep it smooth on top. So then you have a nice smooth surface when it cooks. Now you put the damp cloth over it. Now it's got to rise again. And you want it to be over the loaf pan just a little bit. It's baking bread is an all day process. But if you're home, if you have time, it's well worth it. Okay, so I have a little bit of extra dough to show you how to make rolls. So this would be obviously a little teeny roll, but you just go like this, like this, this, and then you plop it down on your cookie sheet. And then, then you have a bunch of rolls like that. And I've noticed that the roll will rise to the size of the container. So if you have a great big container here, then you put like three and three and three, and then they rise all beautiful and beautiful and nice. Huh. There you go. So now the bread has risen and it's even going to rise more in the oven. So who knows how, who knows how yeast works. Look how much this rose, this is risen. I'm gonna put these two in cause they're ready and then I'm gonna wait on these and the oven is 350 degrees and it's about 30 minutes and you want it golden brown. 
<laughs> oh my. We're ready to take it out of the oven, these two loaves. So they have a different size. I should have evened it out a little bit, but we're good. So this is golden brown on the top. There you go. And then I like to put butter on the top. To make it all shiny, shiny, and beautiful on the top. A friend of mine, their family doesn't even know what store-bought bread tastes like. She's, they never buy store-bought bread, it's always homemade. So the thing that's really good about whole wheat bread is you know that it's very healthy for you. It's got the whole wheat. White flour is not very healthy, actually. Okay, I gotta get the other one. These are in the metal pans. They turn out a little bit different. Maybe I need to put a little more pan in them. This wheat actually came from Otto, Wyoming, and I ground it fresh this morning. So I know it's good for you, and I know it's, oh my, look at how pretty that one turned out. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that pretty loaf. I love it. And then I'm gonna put some butter on it. Now I know my family is eating something that's good for them and doesn't have all the preservatives and stuff that is harmful to you. So I hope I helped you know how to make bread and feel free to buy my whole wheat flour from Wyoming. Thank you.